My sister, she's the golden child, the golden wonderful egg of the family. Well, this time, she's done something unspeakable, and my family is still trying to find a way to forgive her. It doesn't matter what she does in life. She could even commit a very heinous crime, and they just overlook it. Well, this time, she's gone too far, and it's coming out of my pocket. So, I tell my family, you know what? I'm not paying for it this time. Well, my parents think that I should buy them a new house, now that they've become homeless after my twin sister Emma lost their home in gambling, and I don't want to. I should probably clarify that the reason I don't want to, it's not just because I'm planning a wedding with my long-term boyfriend Mark, but it's because of my twin sister Emma. Before you're quick to make a judgment for the sake of my parents, I can even cancel my marriage to buy a house for them. But now it's not just about buying a home. Ever since Emma and I were little, my parents have pampered her a lot to the point Emma doesn't even understand her responsibilities. She lives her life on her own terms but expects others to always cater to her needs. Before we get into the story, I'll give you an idea of why my parents began to spoil my twin sister. It all happened when Emma and I were about three years old. It was the New Year's and we were out in the front yard lighting firecrackers. Let me tell you, Emma was always unruly from a young age. That night, our parents were busy attending guests and serving meals while Emma and I were playing in the front yard. Before mom left us both in the yard, she warned us not to play with fireworks by ourselves. I listened to her and got my eyes glued on the sky looking at the fireworks. Whereas, Emma started to light the firecrackers and all of a sudden I heard a huge, loud bang. I turned around to see where the noise had come from and it was the noise of firecrackers. Emma had lit the firecrackers, but because of her carelessness, it bursted, causing third-degree burns on her face. Emma cried in agony. The sight was not pleasing at all, and our family rushed towards us and carried Emma to the hospital, but it was too late. Emma was left behind with a dangerous scar for the rest of her life, which my parents took the blame for. They believed that it was because of their ignorance and negligence. Emma became the victim of the incident. Trust me, it was not my parents' fault. Emma had always been a troublemaker. Even if my parents had their eyes glued on Emma, she would always find one way or the other just to get into another bit of mischief. But who would tell my parents? They weren't ready to listen to anyone but their pampered princess, Emma. I lived with my parents till the tender age of 18, until I was asked to pay for the rent of the home, which Pampered Princess was never asked to do. I mean, why would they even ask her to pay the rent when she's given allowance till now? I grew up in a quite strict household. My parents were not well off, and I had to think twice before asking to order food from the restaurants. But that was never the case of Pampered Princess. She always got what she wished for. Don't think that I'm saying all this in light or jealousy. Trust me, I would never be jealous of a pampered princess. In fact, I'm glad my parents pampered her instead of me. Because now I'm really successful in my own life. In the eyes of my parents, pampered princess would do nothing wrong. So they gave her everything that she desired. A car, money for college, and was even allowed to live there rent free. However, I had to work at the local restaurant on weekends and even studied hard for a scholarship because my parents strictly told me they wouldn't be able to afford college fees as they had only saved up for a pampered princess. I was fine with that too, but when pampered princess blew away all the college money to gamble and party in Las Vegas, no one really said anything to her. I could tell dad was furious, but later he forgave her as a pampered princess cried her little crocodile tears. Everything was going fine, but my parents decided to rent out my room to give money to pampered princess as her pocket money. Quite unbelievable, I know, but it's true. I either had to start paying the rent or I was kicked out from my own house so another tenant could start living there. I was actually disheartened, so... 
I moved out with my boyfriend, Mark, who, by the way, is the biggest sweetheart and has supported me in every step of my life. Soon enough, we decided to start up our own little startup IT company. Cut back to now, and mom called me one night. Mind you, it was midnight, to be precise, 12.04. She was crying, and we lost it all. We lost it all, she says. Weeping back and forth, and then my heart starts to race. I had no clue what she was talking about, and mom, could you please tell me what's going on? I asked her several times, but she kept repeating, we lost it all. I hung up the phone and called dad. In my opinion, Dad's a bit more sensible, and he told me how Emma used their house as collateral and lost it in gambling. Are you kidding me? How did that even happen? I screamed in outrageously tone. My hands and feet were trembling. Why would you allow such a thing, I asked Dad. He didn't have a concrete answer, and he just said, Well, it was Mom, wasn't it? I asked. She took our retirement money, and all we're left with was our house. Emma told us she would give us double the amount of the retirement money. Then Dad said again, Oh yeah, I'm glad you got double the amount now. It's not Emma's fault. We were unable to give her pocket money, so this happened. Pocket money? I screamed at the top of my lungs. What pocket money are you talking about? She's 25 years of age. Before I could even complete the sentence, Mom snatched the phone and yelled, You have no right to yell at us while you're living in a house yourself. I was beyond words at this point. Now, what do you want from me? I asked. My mom's tone of voice changed immediately and she was no longer angry, but rather sounded as sweet as my boyfriend, Mark. Oh, honey, please buy us a house so that we can all start a new life. My ears began to ring. Are you kidding me, mother? I inquired in a loud, bold voice. How can you expect this from me? What happened to your retirement savings, I asked. Uh, I know exactly what happened. You gave away the money to your pampered princess so she could give you double the amount, didn't you? I couldn't believe my mother. Just a few months ago, she was also calling me crying, asking to pay Emma's college loans after she dropped out. Believe it or not, I'm still paying thousands of dollars worth of Emma's college loans, and now they want me to buy them a home. Who do they think I am? A gold-laying goose? Where's your pampered princess now? I strictly asked Mother. She stressed out, please don't bug her. Well, I hung up the phone while a thousand of thoughts were flooding through my mind. I chose to think about specifically that one moment. It was the first time Mom invited Mark home. Mom didn't care to hold up good conversations with Mark, but rather emphasized that there was something more important that she wanted to discuss about before Emma came. Deep down, I felt Mom was about to talk about our marriage because isn't that what mothers dream about from their children? Isn't it about us? I blurted out. Mom looked at me and turned towards Mike. I immediately felt a sharp pain in my stomach and I knew something was off and Mom wanted something from me. She goes like, uh, You and Mark are dating incredibly well in your lives, but Emma needs your help. You know how she's been drinking and gambling all night, so she gambled her car, has no job. No job? When did she even have a job, Mom? Mom stared at me and said, You both have a startup company. Please give her a job there. I bit my tongue and resisted saying yes. It must be so tough for her. I can understand, I replied. When Mom did not get the desired answer from me, she turned towards Mike. Please note that this is the first time Mike and Mom have ever met, and Mike is an exceptionally good guy. He straight up nodded his head and agreed. I kicked his leg underneath the table, but it was too late. Soon enough, the princess of the house arrived, completely trashed and wasted. Without even greeting, she straight up swears at my boyfriend and goes, Who is he? Talks about manners and etiquette. Thank goodness, Mom scolded her that time, and she apologized. She sat next to me, and the pungent smell of alcohol stung me. 
You're going to work at that new startup company and I won't take no for an answer, Mom exclaimed. I almost choked on my drink. Was this the reason why Mom invited us, I thought to myself. Emma's laughter interrupted my thought process and I focused on the food. While Mark stared at my sister in a complete shock, he must have wondered whether my sister was some sort of alien from outer space. Well, we all kept quiet. There was nothing else to talk about, so we promptly left. I'll call you tomorrow, okay? Your sister's coming, Mom mentioned. Mark shook his head and smiled, and as soon as we sat on the car, I got ballistic with Mark. How could you even say yes to that, I asked furiously. But my poor man just wanted to give my sister a chance. I knew my sister very well and also knew that she didn't deserve a chance, but I kept my lips quiet. The next morning, I got a call from my mom saying Emma was coming, but since she didn't have a car, she demands that I come to pick her up, even after I told her I had to be back to meetings at 9 a.m. My mom wasn't ready to hear no for an answer, so I traveled an hour to go to mom's place picked up my princess passenger and drove her to work. Instead of a polite thank you, my princess passenger slammed the door and got out of the car. What is my work? She asked my boyfriend. So, your sister and I have decided that you should take track of the attendance and manage the employee database. For your information, we have 20 staff members in our company back then, which obviously seems to be too much for our little pretty princess. And guess what she demanded? I drop her off at one of the pubs. Guys, at this point, I was absolutely furious. There was no sense of responsibility for that girl. Mark told me that maybe we should give her another chance to show herself. And the next day, I strictly demanded that Emma has to finish all the work within a week. No, I didn't set a sturdy deadline. To be honest, the work would only take about a few hours if done sincerely. But our pampered princess ends up messing up the entire work and deleting almost all of our entire files in anger. So, we kick her out of the office. Hiring her must have been the biggest mistake for us ever. We had more to lose than to win, so that's how I became certain Emma doesn't care about anyone but herself. I was fed up with that attitude. Mom was blowing up my phone at this point with phone calls, but I didn't pick up and decided to just go to sleep. Of course, I was super stressed out and worried. Where are all they going to sleep now? What are they going to eat? The thoughts just kept crossing my mind. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redditto here. So I still have a few updates for you, and I just want you to know things are about to get pretty wild. Here's update number two. If you're new to the channel, guys, consider subscribing as it's the best way to support me. And let's jump into this update. Since the last update, life has been getting even more difficult for us. As I lay in the bed with hands folded on my chest, Mark held my hand and hugged me. It's going to be fine, he assured me, and I began to cry my eyes out. I didn't know what to do next. I was so puzzled, Mark suggested that I talk to my dad for better clarity. So I called him up. From his voice, it was apparent that he's been crying. Dad was quite different from Mom and Emma, but he was also heavily influenced by Mother. I asked him where they were staying. In a low voice, he mentioned that they were allowed to stay in the house for a week, but had to pay $100 each. They had no money or anything, so I decided to transfer them money, but I was totally against the idea of buying them a home. The relief of them being able to stay for a week made it easier for me to fall asleep. So, the next morning, I woke up with my phone bombarded with text messages from mom, quote, You need to buy us a house. You have money. With you, I know you have money. I was furious and straight up called her and she picked up the phone in the blink of an eye like as if she's been waiting for me to call her. You need to help us. We're homeless. It was really not my fault that my parents gave away all their money to their older daughter to go gamble and splurge on alcohol. Couldn't believe that Emma could put my parents' house on collateral. It was after all my parents' fault. I don't have money to buy a home, Mom. How can you even think of that? 
I asked my mom calmly after swallowing anger. You do, she screamed on the phone. My anger starts to boil inside of me, but Mark shook his head, signaling that I should just keep quiet, and haven't you been planning weddings with your boyfriend? Why do you need to get married? And what about profits that you've been generating from your startup? I'm sure all those will be enough to buy us a good house, she asserted. Her enraged words seared my heart and I was boiling with absolute rage. How could my mom be so selfish, I wondered. It hurts my heart whenever I compare my parents with Mike's. It was his parents who lent me money for our startup. They've even helped us buy this house. Two months ago, we went to stay at Mike's parents' house for a week. What I'm going to share with you is quite a personal tale, and I'm not sure Mike would appreciate me sharing this on the internet. But if I don't tell you this, it'll be difficult for you to understand my situation and circumstances, so. I met with Mike's parents several times, and let me tell you, they are nothing compared to my parents. They are so sweet as Mike, and they love me like their own daughter. Whenever I'm at their place, I feel like I'm home, but the meet with his parents two months ago was nothing compared to our meet in the past. Mike's mom told us that her husband was suffering from last stage of lung cancer. There was a lump in my throat. Mike took a deep breath and tears started flowing down his face. I'd never seen him cry like that, and Mike's dad had been coughing excessively, but we never thought he'd get diagnosed with cancer at that late of a stage. It was heartbreaking moment and Mike's mom told us that her husband didn't have much time left on this world and his only last wish was to see his son get married in the same chapel which he was married in. Mike and I have been talking about getting married since quite some time and his parents were well aware about it. So it's safe to say they weren't trying to pressure us. It was an emotional moment for all of us. Mike and I promised to fulfill father's last wish. In case you were wondering, my side of the family knew about this, yet my mom decided it would be best for me to cancel our wedding to buy them a home. I mean, if they can depend on me so much, why can't they depend on their other child for whom they've been giving the world? Why can't little Emma go stand up on her own feet, get a job, get a house? Why is it that whenever some sort of crisis occurs in my family, I need to take the responsibility? Should I be sacrificing myself to vanish? My family's financial struggles, which they created themselves, by the way. You're too selfish, Mom, to be asking me to cancel my wedding when you clearly know what Mike's family's going through. I lashed out at her. My mom didn't even seem to care. She kept on stressing that it was unfair I met the needs of Mike's families and became blindsided on their needs. I'm not buying you a house, and that's final. I said it loud and clear so it leaves an imprint on my mother's mind. She was furious and hung up the phone. Am I the a-hole for not buying a house for my parents? Update number four. Hey guys, I expected the last update where I explained my reasoning to be the end of it. My decision was made, and that was all there was to it. I spoke to Mike about it, and he agreed that it was not reasonable for me to buy a house for my parents because of what my sister did. And I thought all the drama would be over there. My parents did not call me, and neither did I, but soon I realized it was the calm before the chaos. I came across a YouTube video with the title, The Evil Sister, with my face in the thumbnail, I was mortified and embarrassed. I quickly opened the video and Emma was recording herself outside my parents' home. Quote, My family and I are homeless because of my twin sister. She lived in our house before she got a boyfriend who only allows her to stay in his house for free. But now, when our family's struggling financially, she's hesitant to help us? End quote. My startup company benefits a lot from the public image, so you can really imagine the kind of negativity that this would bring my company due to my sister bashing me on YouTube videos. 
By the way, after I was asked to pay rent at my own parent's house, my boyfriend and I decided to buy a house using both of our money equally. As I kept watching the video, I noticed Pampered Princess had also asked Mom to say a few words about me. I was stunned to hear that my mother went on to say that I had abused them in every way possible and it was my fault that their house was about to be taken away from them. I was furious. I dialed up my mom's number and demanded that we meet that instant. My mom said okay without any questions asked and it seemed as though her plan to get me talking immediately hit the spot. Without thinking anything, I asked her to come over. Well, within two hours, my doorbell rings. I open the door and you won't believe. My mom, dad, and sister were standing outside my door with their luggage. I just invited my mom to talk about the video but seemed like they got the wrong impression or they forced themselves to my house without my or my boyfriend's permission. I kept quiet while Pampered Princess stormed inside my house with her dirty little boots on. How disrespectful. I'm quite conservative in regards to things like that. I like to keep my shoes outside of the home. Deep down, I knew this problem would not go away, but now it's got worse. If you can believe that. Everyone sat on the sofa and there was silence for a few minutes straight. None of us knew how to start the conversation. At this point, it was Saturday morning, so Mark was also home. Thank goodness for that. He greeted everyone and started to talk about the video. The mounting exasperation tightened my throat and I was raging like a bull. What made you do that? Mark asked. You won't believe, but my mom began to smile and started saying, Oh, it's nothing, dear. It's just a way for us to get funds to buy a house. I clenched my fist deep down and I really wanted to get violent with my own family, but there was no way that I would do that. I tried to keep my mouth quiet, although anger coursed through my veins. Hearing my mother... I don't know, and both Emma and Dad begin to giggle like they had a hidden ulterior motive which Mom didn't talk about. The temperature in the room seemed to rise as my bald fist started to turn white at the knuckles. What's so funny? I asked with a straight face. You! Emma replied. At that moment, I lost it all. Get out of my house, I screamed, but Emma instead smiled and showed me the comments on the video. The video had gotten tons of views and people were writing terrible things about me. Mark asked me to stop reading the comments, but it's like a weird compulsion that I can't stop. Why are you doing this to me? I asked my parents. They looked at me and simply implied, why don't you buy us a home? I don't have money to buy a house, mom. Why don't you understand? I tried to plead. Mom looked at me deep in the eyes and suggested that we all live together in my home instead. I felt my heart reach my throat and I wanted to barf my entire organs out. I had enough of everything. Before I could even say a word, Mark agreed and showed them the guest room. Let me tell you, we were living in a two-bedroom house, by the way. So if my parents stayed in the guest room, the pampered princess would have to sleep in the living room. You need to get yourself a place to live. This is only going to be a short-term solution, right? I politely tried to convince my father. But mom barged in between our conversation and said it was my responsibility to take care of my parents. I agree. I am responsible to take care of my parents, but not when my parents mentally harass me and forcibly make me do stuff. I'd also given dad money for food and shelter, which Pampered Princess had taken to gamble another time. I can't believe how my parents agree to each and everything that this girl asked for. The next day came in a blink of an eye. I came down to make some breakfast when I noticed Pampered Princess sleeping on the couch, snoring like a pig. The entire living room smelt of alcohol and vomit. I looked around and realized all my fears came to reality. The girl drank some of our favorite collections of aged whiskey and had puked on my favorite white carpet which was imported from Germany. I put my hands on my head and broke down in tears. 
Mark hears me crying at this point and came rushing. My family had made our lives a living heck and miserable. I tried to wake Emma up to clean the mess, but she was too drunk to even move a finger. At this point, Mark and I had to leave for work, without eating or saying a word to anybody. I could still smell the vomit in my hands after cleaning up the mess, and when we reached the workplace, some of the staff wanted to quit because they didn't want to work under people who didn't take care of their parents and are disrespectful towards them. We had also lost many long-term clients because of the video that surfaced that my family posted. Mike and I were absolutely devastated. We tried our best to forget about everything that turns things around in the company, but it was absolutely difficult. When the clock struck 5 p.m., we both dreaded going back home. We didn't know what would be waiting for us, and... As Mike and I reached home, the house looked more like a pigsty than a space for humans to live at. There were bits and pieces of crisps, breads, biscuits lying on the floor and table wherever possible. Mike looked at me and silently cleaned the mess. We both haven't eaten anything since the morning and the sight of the home like that just made us want to stay hungry for as long as we could. Or at least until the wild animals left our house and left us in peace. We didn't speak to anybody. We went straight to our bedroom. We could hear Pampered Princess talking on the phone loudly and aggressively yelling at somebody. She must have drank our alcohol again, I uttered. Leave it. We can't do anything about it. Mike reassured and suddenly we get a call from Mike's mom. We only have two months left for the wedding and how was the wedding preparation going, she asked. Mike and I looked at each other and kept quiet, and I knew you both would be busy, so your dad and I have planned something special. We've decided to hold your marriage ceremony at our house. Come over once, or we can also come so that you can both finalize the decorations, menus, and of course the guest list. Mike's parents are really like an angel, while my side of the family was ready to tear the house down. His parents tried to save the day for us. The thought of getting married to the love of our lives made us want to cherish that moment. We sneakily went down to the kitchen and got an ice cream to share it with each other. We both soon realized that we had the power to be happy or sad. It was just a decision. We decided to go to Mark's parents' house for the wedding preparation and it was a three-hour flight from our home. We thought it'd be a great little break for us all, and so we left our house in the hands of our family and left. A one-week stay at Mark's house was relishing and refreshing. We were happy when we arrived home, but as we entered inside, most of the furniture was missing. Update 5. Final update. My sister not only lost my parents' house in gambling, but she sold our furniture for, I don't know what, probably to drink alcohol or even to gamble. Lord knows. But hey, it's okay. I whispered to myself and walked inside. Thank goodness the carpet looked untouched. I looked at Mike and decided it was time that we let my parents know about our decision. We've decided that you will all no longer be staying at our house. My family looked at me with an expression that clearly showed they would not leave the home. In fact, we won't be staying at this house either, I firmly said. Oh, why? My mom was quick to ask. Because this house is sold. We sold it, I uttered with great satisfaction. Oh, so you must have bought another house. No, I smiled back at my mother and handed my parents the nursing home papers. Mike and I decided to give our wedding money to secure my parents' lodging and fooding at a nursery home for their entire life. And where will I live? Emma asked. Get a job, and you'll figure that out yourself. I uttered to her and dragged our suitcase out of the home while the next tenants came to get the keys. You'll be surprised to know that Mike and I left our old lives behind and started a new life with Mike's family. We even got married at the same chapel Mike's dad wanted, opened a cancer research center, and finally lived life on our own terms. 
Sometimes I miss my parents, even though they were very toxic, so I call the nursing home and take updates about them. I get happy to know that they're doing fine. You might be wondering, what happened to my sister? Well, we decided to help her by sending her to rehab. She's now opened a therapy center for people who have gone through a similar phase, and to be honest, I'm happy that my family's at a better place. Now, I am a mother of two twin daughters, and I promise myself that I will not do the things that my mother once did to me. Alright guys, so let's talk about this story. So, I'll be real with you. The entire story, my least favorite character had to have been Emma. She was just putting her family in more of a more of a hole over and over. I know her parents were enabling her activities, but still. So at the very end of the story, when I found out Emma was actually getting help in rehab, I will say I started to like her more because she's trying to change her life and turn it around for the better. And that's all thanks for the help of OP, her sister. Guys, I want to know, if your family was going down this route and you find out that your sister just lost the family home and essentially made your family homeless, what would you do in response? If you were in the exact same scenario, or if you're in your situation, I don't care either way, just let me know what you would do. Guys, thank you for joining me on today's story. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I read stories every single day. Some of the stories are very dramatic. I try to find them all across the World Wide Web. And once again, thank you for joining in. Make sure you subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.